everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at RubeWorks, the official Rube Goldberg invention game. First off, this title screen is so graphically poorly designed that it looks like I made it, but this is a game that is intriguing for a number of reasons. If you're not familiar with what Rube Goldberg inventions are, you can kind of just look at the photo there. Basically, the Rube Goldberg invention is this uh, invention that makes doing a simple task automated, but more complicated. So, for example, maybe you want to, uh, you know, make yourself some French fresh orange juice in the morning, and the way that you have that work is you hook a parrot up to a string, and then the parrot squawks in the morning, and that, you know, causes it to fly in the air, it pulls the string, which causes a knife to fall down on some oranges, the oranges then get smashed by a hammer, and ipso facto, the orange juice goes into a glass, and then somehow you end up drinking it. So, Rube Goldberg inventions are basically arbitrarily convoluted solutions to very simple problems, but they're clever because you don't actually have to be actively involved in them. This is currently available on Steam. Uh, I've played, uh, you know, maybe an hour of it. I'm very, very bad. It looks like there's about 18 puzzles in the game, at least in the earliest part. It might get a little bit longer. And this is a port of a mobile game. Uh, I picked it up myself when it was three bucks for its opening week sale at 40% off. It, uh, actually is five dollars for its actual price. And your mileage may vary on this, but, you know, I certainly think that, um, you get what you see, or what you see is what you get uh, with with this game. I think the interface stuff is really bad. Not just a uh, mobile e, but I think the interface definitely could use some work. Um, but the game itself, you know, it does what it's purported to do. I, I've already, I, I really want to skip the tutorial here. I didn't realize that the first level is always going to be a tutorial, so I'll just talk aimlessly while I click through all this stuff. Basically, um, you know how in point and click adventure games, uh, the, there's a Kind of a trend, at least for with the old school point and click adventure games, to have very arbitrary puzzle solutions. So, give me a second here, I'll place this here, uh, because the game wants me to. Uh, there's a tendency for them to have very arbitrary solutions, so I always use this analogy, but you'd be playing a point and click adventure game, and it's like, my keys fell in the sewer grate, and then you've gotta be like, okay, I'm gonna find like a piece of fishing line, and we're gonna use that as a rope, and then we're gonna attach a piece of chewing gum, which I caused that child to spit out to that, and then we're gonna dangle it down there, get the keys, and bring them back up. So it's all kind of arbitrary. Um, this is basically that exact, uh, kind of mechanic, just made a little bit more transparent. So every solution in this game is arbitrary. This guy's gotta wake up, he wants orange juice when he wakes up. Why is there a man that he employs with a glass on his head with symbols? Because he wants to not have to worry about it, I guess he has the riches necessary to, to afford to be this crazy and eccentric. Um, I think this might be the end of the solution, maybe, or the end of the tutorial, maybe not. So yeah, you just kind of have to get over the fact that the um, the game is completely arbitrary. Once this overly long tutorial uh, is over here, um, I'm going to stop this test. Oh, I can't. So this is just going to play the solution, which is, as of right now, not actually working. Please tell me that you can actually let me do things myself here. Oh, come on, any second. It's now your turn to complete the invention. Thank fucking God. Alright, so we can actually uh, exercise some agency ourselves here. So the main thing you want to know is that, again, this is basically a point-and-click adventure game, just kind of stylized in a different way. So the most important thing is to look at the objects in your inventory and see what kind of hints they have associated with them. This is a magnifying glass. Besides making things larger, it can focus sunlight. Sunlight coming through the end will be very bright and hot, hot enough to melt rubber. And then you can see, oh, look at this, we've got a hot water bag. Filled with water, the bag is made of rubber and could melt if it gets too hot. Hang the bag from a string where it will do the most good. Now, you, your mileage may vary. You may use less tips than I use. Um, that would make it more entertaining, I think. But um, we can maybe start to think, like, okay, the light will come in through the window. Hit the magnifying glass. We'll place this hot water bag, like, right here. Then we can use a string to tie that to the roof. And then, uh, cool. So this will... After we do this, you can see that it'll melt the water, or melt the bag, and it'll cause the water to actually drip down on this stool. As you might guess, uh, what we want to do after that is put this thing here. This is a pelt pet Albanian ook. It hates dripping water, gives it a headache. If it gets wet, it will leave to get aspirin. Of course, right? Its tail looks like a perfect place to tie a string. So again, you know, it's prudent to look at the hints, just because... A lot of the things that these things do are arbitrary. A lot of the things that the puzzle elements do are arbitrary. Who knew that this thing would leave to get aspirin when it gets water dripped on it? But at least they have the hints there anyway. So we're going to actually we're going to disconnect this string for now. But I will just solve this puzzle basically super quickly. We're going to put the uh, jack in the box here, which is going to scare this man, I think. Musician and head balancer. His specialty is symbols. 
he won't play without a conductor. Okay, so that's the jack in the box. The jack in the box is going to be a conductor. And then we'll, like, hang the orange from a string like this, I think, and this should be good to go. So theoretically, let's follow uh, the money here, Wall Street style. If I am correct in my assumption, light comes in through the window, melts the hot water bottle. Water drips on the Albion Ook, it jumps away, causing the jack-in-the-box to go. That will serve as a conductor. This man will smash the symbols above his head, crushing the orange and getting the orange juice into the glass. Let's test that out and see if it works. So light comes in through the window, melts the hot water bottle. Hot water bottle gets water on the Albion Ook. Albion Ook jumps away. Jack in the box is a conductor, and he smashes the orange juice into the glass. He's spilling a lot of it. Again, I don't understand why this guy couldn't just set an alarm clock and then go to the kitchen, but maybe I am missing the in inherent humor due to absurdity of Rube Goldberg inventions. So there you go. Uh, I don't need an instant replay. We already basically had a very slow-mo start there. And the game ranks you on your performance, which is kind of crazy to me because at least so far, I don't think I've seen puzzles that have more than one solution, so I don't know how you get less than three stars, but maybe there's a way. I don't think it's based on time either. So I'm gonna go through uh, another puzzle here. Oh my god. So it, what's kind of cool is if you are a fan of this stuff, it does have like old school like uh, comics and, and stuff like that. So I don't know, maybe if you've read all of these, it's gonna be uh, very too easy for you to succeed maybe. But it's kind of cool that it has those like, you know, 1930s style comics here. Uh, we'll move on to the next level though. And again, I can't stress enough that if you don't like point and click adventure games, this one is probably not gonna be up your alley. And to be honest with you, I kind of find uh, it infuriating sometimes because maybe I'm too much of a pragmatist right when I look at this it's like easy way to carve a turkey I'm like well you already cooked the turkey that takes like 10 fucking hours why don't you just use a knife and carve it that's the easy part why not automatic way to cook a turkey I guess that's called an oven um, but it is that absurdity I guess that makes Rube Goldberg inventions um, nice it's just kind of or it makes them not funny I guess not necessarily nice but it's just kind of unpalatable to me. That being said, I do think this game is good at what it does, like representing these crazy absurd puzzles in this in this format. It's not a perfect game, but it's also extremely cheap and uh, I, I could totally see some people being into this. So, let's look at our elements. Bowl of chicken salad cooling whilst on the windowsill. The chicken salad was just made. The chicken looks really fresh. Not everyone appreciates fresh chicken salad. Um, as you might expect, we can look at our chicken here. Rooster searching for his missing wife. Oh, this is kind of sad in a Milo and Otis style way. What was his wife? What's that steaming bowl filled with? What happens if nearsighted Rooster sees what's in the bowl? And it'll be bad. So we can actually put um, like this over here. It's like an avian perch. And again, that's just because I've looked at the hints before. And then we can test it and see if this actually works out. So put bowl of chicken salad on the windowsill to cool. Rooster recognizes his wife in the salad and is overcome with grief. And then he starts crying. So for him to cry, um, he can then, I think, interact with a sponge. So, like, look at it. To carve a turkey. Look at the ingredients you need for this Rube Goldberg invention. Freshly cooked chicken salad. So not you made the chicken salad already. I don't know how you got the chicken salad into a bowl. You probably had Ving Rhames come by. You signed an autograph for the biggest Ving Rhames fan in the world. Who then slipped on a banana peel. And uh, the roasted chicken that he was holding that he bought from the grocery store fell into a paper shredder that you put there early. I don't know, man. Um, but yeah, you need chi freshly cooked cooling chicken salad, an avian perch for a rooster with a missing wife to sit on. So you had to like murder his wife specifically for this to work. A sponge, a sand dispenser, a bucket, or is it a spring? Beach pail, that's a bucket. You need a penguin, fresh from the South Pole, I guess. Um, so money is clearly no object. I'm beginning to think that Rube Goldberg inventions are just a, a very intimate peek into the life of an insane rich person. This is like Richie Rich's dad after he realizes that Richie Rich is as actually Casper the Friendly Ghost. And he's uh, your son's been dead the whole time. I think this is what happens to him. And then eventually he becomes a supervillain. Anyway, chicken is on the avian perch. Chicken salad contains his wife. He's not really that concerned about it right now, but he will be um, once we start testing it. Now, we can actually cause him to... Uh, wet this sponge. It seems like there would be more effective ways to do that, but nope, that's fine. Uh, and then by wetting this sponge and then connecting it to something else, I... What do we connect this to? I'm trying to remember. Maybe this pulley, and then that pulls the ice cream lid off? Let's test this out. So we do that. The guy's like, oh shit, you're eating my wife. It's really cruel to force him to live through this every single time. 
Uh, and this will pull up the ice cream lid, I think, due to the wonders of our pulley-based system here. Uh, actually, you know what? We can do this in a different way. This might actually just work, but I think this will be the least... It's, an, it's a better way of doing it than the actual puzzle solution. But I think that this will actually cause us to get less golden prunes because we didn't use all of the absurd ingredients at our disposal. I still have the- Why did I buy this sand dispenser if I'm not gonna use it, even though the system totally works already? So just by completely ignoring, uh, the sand dispenser, we can make this penguin happy because it's cold. He thinks he's at the South Pole again. Then, uh, that'll turn this fan and that conveyor belt I attached will cause this turkey to get sliced. Uh, which is wonderful, but we might only get a couple of golden prunes there. So maybe there actually are, um, extra solutions here that I didn't notice before. 5,500. I only got two golden prunes there, so we're gonna restart here. Um, let's remove the strings in particular is the problem that I've got going on here. And again, if you want to talk about, you know, the arbitrary nature of this game, this is it right here. Um... Good solution isn't good enough because it was too elegant. Most games reward you in the opposite way. But really the way that we're gonna do this now is basically just by adding in one extra completely unnecessary step. Which is kind of the point, I guess. This now, uh, heavy sponge, when it gets weighted down by the tears of the rooster, will pull sand out of the sand dispenser, which will fall into the bucket. Raising this a little bit, and then we hook up our string in exactly the same way, and we've spent more money and more time setting this up, so naturally, it'll be worth a higher score. That's how I judge things like home repairs. Was it a good renovation? Yes, because I spent more money than I had to, and, uh, was way more aggravated than was totally necessary. The sand falls into the pail. The pail weights down that weird fulcrum, which causes the ice cream freezer to come up, and now the penguin flaps his wings, and that causes the turkey to slice itself. Wonderful. Uh, we don't need to stop it, we'll just wait until the game actually gives us three prunes for that. And we'll probably try to solve, like, another puzzle or two. I've already done, like, the first four, but, oh, I, thankfully I clicked the check mark, so I watched the instant replay. I don't believe there's any way to get around that. Nope, I'm hitting the escape key right now, but we've got to watch it again, so I'm not going to narrate what happens here. Yeah, it's not a perfect game, for reasons like this. It's I, I don't necessarily mean this as an objective negative, but it is very mobile port-y. Uh, different developers put different amounts of effort into putting their game on PC, and I'm not trying to suggest that the developers of Rubeworks are lazy. What I will say is that, you know, it's got some mobile quirks that don't necessarily work out well on PC. Largely, the, the interface consisting exclusively of check marks and X's is, uh, kind of annoying, as is the inability to stop a scene as it's playing out like that, so, um, and I mean, that's fine, I've learned to deal with it by this point, but, um, the interface is by far the worst part of this game. As long as you're still okay with the idea of Rube Goldberg, Rube Goldberg inventions in the first place, and if you're not, then why are you even bothering to play the game, is basically what we should get at here. So, the one thing I will say about the game that makes it kind of easy at some points is that all of the, uh, ingredients seem to be outlined on the bottom in kind of the order that you need to place them, so, in some ways, this kind of cheapens the experience, so I can be like, I don't even need to know what half this stuff is, I can just put it down here, so this will be an exploding cap. Um, what will the exploding cap do? It will cause maybe, oh, maybe they're not all in the order. It will cause this rabbit to get angry, so we can then connect, the, or to run away, because it'll be scared of the noise. Then we can hook the rabbit up to the gun. The gun is going to shoot, let me guess, this bucket of water. I mean, I've done this before, but I think it's fairly logical. The bucket of water will cause a leakage, which will cause this flotation device to go up a little bit. This one's a little bit esoteric, but we'll put the flea on top of this, and, uh... Then this pedestal, like, right there, and this like this. Oh, whoa, what have I done? They'll put the gedunk hound here, and, uh, then the final piece of the puzzle here will be, like, this sprinkler. And we'll just pan out a little bit. Is everything connected the way it should be? Car goes forward. This is an automatic garage door opener, as if it matters what the solution at the end uh, necessarily is. Um, hit the hammer. Hits the exploding cap. Bunny gets scared, runs away. Gun shoots at the pail. Raising the water level, causing this to hit the, uh, the little balance board that the flea is on. The flea will tip over. I wonder if I can actually move that to this side. Yeah, that's fine. The flea will tip over onto the gedunk hound, which will get scared and run around in a circle, turning on the water. Automatic sprinkler system will turn on, uh, and then we probably need a string to connect this to a pulley through the garage door. Let's test this out. I should remember this correctly, I think. 
As arbitrary as it is, once you kind of get into the mindset, it's pretty logical, and you can do it relatively quickly. Here we go. This is the moment of truth. The sprinkler is going to spin around, and that is going to pull the garage door closed or open, so we can actually go through there. Um, that's probably going to do it for my impressions of, of Ruberg so far. If you're a fan of the games uh, in this vein, you know, the Incredible Machine, stuff like that, um... I mean, they actually are making a new Incredible Machine. I think it's out on Steam Early Access. I don't, I don't know how good it is, though. I haven't played it yet. I forget what it's called as well. I mean, like Incredible Contraption or something like that. Um, but yeah, if you're a fan of games like this, this is an inexpensive way to get your fix. You can get at least a couple of hours out of it. Even though I've kind of breezed through the puzzles so far, that's largely because... Yes, uh, that's largely because uh, I've done them before. When I was doing it for the first time, I was like, what the f- how the fuck do you do any of this? Be Why don't you just go over to the window and close it if you want to close so badly? The invention you're building is going to take a hundred years, but, um... Yeah, this, this seems like a relatively easy way to uh, get your fix, an inexpensive way to get your fix. And for what it is, I think it's pretty good. It's not necessarily my cup of tea. And uh, to make that cup of tea, I'm going to need, uh, if you could possibly get me a copy of Britney Spears' first album, Hit Me Baby One More Time. I'm going to need that on uh, cassette tape, actually. And uh, I'm going to need two butter knives and uh, an industrial-sized tub of margarine and Lindsay Lohan's asshole. Um, that, that's just for me, though. Um, yeah, if you're, if you're into that kind of thing, pick it up on Steam. There will be a link in the video description below. For everybody else, for an impulse purchase, eh, you might find yourself aggravated. I've been a little bit aggravated, just because I think Rube Goldberg inventions are kind of silly, but I do have, like, Rube Goldberg PTSD, uh, because we, had, in sixth grade science class, we had to make a Rube Goldberg invention, but I was, like, sick on the day when my science teacher explained what Rube Goldberg inventions were, so I only kind of tangentially understood what they were about. So I, I basically put a pencil through a Tupperware container, tied it to a string, and then tied the string to a doorknob, and I would just, like, reel in the pencil, and it would open the door. And then I showed it to my teacher, and he's like, this is not a Rube Goldberg invention. That's just, you tied a string to a doorknob. I was like, turns out, you know, it was fucking silly. And it got, like, a C in science that year, which is very silly, considering it was the sixth fucking grade. But in any case, that maybe that is why I have an aversion to Rube Goldberg inventions. But, you know, Rube works. I think it does what it sets out to do admirably enough. Check it out on Steam if you're interested, and of course, if you like the video, click the like button. It helps out a great deal, and of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.